Hey everyone, the Capcom Pro Tour 2022 has now officially started, marking what is likely Street Fighter V's last year, but we're still waiting for more information regarding the next title in the franchise. So far, we've only seen a small cinematic trailer featuring Ryu and Luke, so we kinda have to fill in the gaps with our own ideas until Capcom decides to reveal anything concrete. That's easier said than done, though. The truth is that, for now, we're simply missing too much information, like the number of characters in the lineup or the game's story, which might not be the first thing that comes to mind when a new Street Fighter is announced, but it's still an important part of the game. During my first video, I touched on some of my ideas regarding the plot, but I thought it could be interesting to expand them a little further and maybe offer a few possible alternate scenarios. Obviously, none of this is official, but it's not every day we get a new Street Fighter and I kinda think it's fun to speculate, so if you agree with me, sit back and enjoy my thoughts on what Street Fighter 6 might be about. Theory 1. Rose's Time Travel we might as well start with the most likely scenario, since there were quite a few indications during the last game that this is where the story is going. That said, a lot of it was very difficult to follow, borderline nonsensical, so saying there's room for interpretation is an understatement. But anyways, in Street Fighter V we saw how Rose was still feeling at ease after Bison's demise in the main storyline. As far as we know, he was finally destroyed, taking his evil psycho power with him. Still, Rose felt a strange energy, which Odo explains is an evil or unbalanced, but an overwhelming force of nature, whatever that means. Apparently, the source of that energy is the mysterious G, a character with the uncanny talent of having large amounts of dialogue without actually explaining anything. For what it's worth, the self-proclaimed president of Earth has a strong connection with the planet and might even be the incarnation of Earth itself. Despite G not being evil, but in fact displaying immense compassion and sympathy towards humanity, even the antagonists, Rose still believes the world is heading to destruction and it's too late to stop it. Eventually she reaches the conclusion that the only way to deal with it is to start all over again, going back to zero to prevent the world heading in the wrong direction. To further complicate things, we get another piece of the puzzle in Odo's story when he talks to Dalsim about Bison's force of will, his dark ambition, trying to swallow the entire world. How exactly this relates to Rose and G is anyone's guess, but it's worth noticing that Odo seems to have a much more optimistic view of things, since he also says that someone in the right state of mind might oppose Bison's will and use their own to save the world instead. Ok, so here's how I try to make sense of all this. During the time Bison and his evil psycho power brought the world to the edge of destruction, the spirit of Earth itself, Gaia aka G, get it? felt the evil influence. This instability eventually caused G to take action, creating a physical form to deal with things more closely. This is what we see in Street Fighter V, when he aims to remind the citizens of Earth of their connection, trying to undo the harm done by the psycho power. However, like an AI that goes rogue and determines humans to be the biggest threat to humanity itself, G's actions and methods slowly grow to be too extreme, still influenced by Bison's evil intent. This is what causes the world to march towards destruction, as Rose foresees G purging the planet to start fresh. Based on the first teaser for Street Fighter VI, Ryu seems to be a bit older than before, so I believe the story mostly takes place after Third Strike, with the threat of Gil's Illuminati already over. However, there is also a possibility that the organization still exists in some shape or form, since it might be a bit too confusing for new players who weren't around during Street Fighter 3, and mind you, there are a lot of them out there, to see Gil and the Illuminati disappear off camera after being, air quotes, introduced at the end of Street Fighter V's story. I don't think Gil himself is coming back, but this might be a chance for Kalim to return. Perhaps she's the one rebuilding the organization from the ground up. But back to Rose. I know she was almost clear about going back in time to change things, a la Raiden from Mortal Kombat 9, but leaning on Oro's optimistic feelings that there's still time to save the planet, 
Perhaps her journey is more about learning than it is about changing the past. After all, if we were in fact going back in time to rewrite history, there would be no need to show us a slightly older you or give a new character like Luke such a prominent role in the story. Capcom could be pulling an X-Men Days of Future Past thing if what Oro means is that Rose can use her willpower to make the impossible happen and allow her consciousness to time travel into the past, but that seems overly complicated and dramatic for a Street Fighter game. So what I believe instead is that Rose might be taking a page out of Brandon Stark's book and simply witnessing past events to learn from them. Like my favorite time travel stories go, perhaps when she tries to change anything, she realizes that whatever it is that she does, she has always done. This idea of having Rose jump between realities would have the obvious benefit of allowing characters from multiple timelines to appear in the story and fight each other in the versus mode without breaking the lore. One obvious application, like I mentioned in my previous video, is to go back to Gotets, the creator of Ryu and Ken's and Satsuken, and master of both Goken and Akuma. This legendary character is long dead, but will make for one hell of a bait to attract new players if Capcom could find a way to justify his presence. Not to mention other noteworthy possibilities like witnessing the creation of Psycho Power or Sagat's confrontation with Dan's father, who, by the way, could also be brought into the game in the same manner. What's more, Rose could also go into the future, allowing us to introduce children of the original characters without having to age them, basically having the cake and eating it too. We could have grown-up Melmasters alongside his father Ken, still in his prime, or maybe even test the waters with Li Fen, Chen Li's adoptive daughter, to see if she's a worthy replacement without cutting ties with Chen Li just yet. Quite frankly, the more I think about this idea, the more I believe Capcom and the fans would love the endless possibilities. In fact, I even want to revise some of my roster choices based on this expanded theory. If you remember my first video, I went with 18 characters as a way to give Capcom just the bare minimum of credit, but if we're hopping timelines, I feel we need at least 25 to allow past and future characters to join the fun. I would also like to revise my Shadowloo observations and remove those three characters from the game, since according to this theory, we wouldn't be seeing Shadowloo return in the base roster. So that means we have 10 extra characters and I'm giving two of those spots to past and future fighters. Gotets, creator of the Ansatsu Ken, and Mel Masters, Ken's son. From Street Fighter 2 I'm adding Zangief and Akuma, both of whom are very popular and Akuma would even have an important part in the story this time. Shun and Dudley from Street Fighter 3 also join the roster. Dudley has been consistently popular and viable in all of his appearances, while Shun is heavily requested and I'm sure Capcom would love the opportunity to give him a makeover. Rose obviously returns since she'll be guiding the plot, but so does Gouken from Street Fighter 4, who like Akuma will have an important part in the plot. And then there's Street Fighter 5 with G that I previously kinda had sharing a spot with Q, and Colleen who now has a plausible reason to appear again. So in conclusion, I believe this story has a huge potential for fan service and ties quite a few plot points with a nice little bow on the top. It's the most plausible scenario, but not the only one. Allow me to present Theory 2, Bison's Resurrection. I've been playing a lot of Ed these days, as those of you that watch my streams might know, and that got me thinking about another possible scenario. What if the way Capcom decides to bring Bison back is by making his spirit take control of Ed's body? After all, I do think Capcom would really like the idea of bringing Bison back, regardless of his demise in the previous game. He's simply the safest bet for a bad guy, and they seem to be leaning back heavily in nostalgia over the past few games. You can tie this into the story too, though it might require a little bit of mental gymnastics. Bison and his psycho power might be gone, but the energy still resides in quite a few characters. 
from any number of still unnamed lackeys and past followers to even some of his now enemies like Ed and Falk. Hell, probably Kemi, the dolls and Abel all have some psycho power running through their bodies too. There's even a precedent for this since it's canon that Bison took control of Rose's body for a while since both of them share a similar power. Rose having been Bison's student back in the day before he corrupted the soul power to create his own psycho power. Street Fighter 4 even talks about those days in Rose's introduction, where she mentions having no memories of the time spent as Bison's vassal. But what about G's nature power, you ask? Well, what if this supposed new trath works like a distraction? Tell me it doesn't sound like the most video game thing ever to introduce a new villain, only for you to discover in the end that the original bad guy is still the real trath. Another possibility is that G's actions will indirectly be the cause of Bison's resurrection. Perhaps in his attempts to cleanse the earth and bring back balance, he weakens the powers keeping Bison so at bay and allows him to force itself into a new body. I know, it sounds more than a little force, but so does all the other times Bison came back from the dead. Small things like logic and good storytelling don't usually get in the way of fighting game characters when the people want to see them return. Furthermore, I see this as an opportunity to reinvent Bison as a new fighter, keeping the nostalgia while at the same time introducing something different. This new, young version of Bison would have had a moveset that is sort of a mix between his most memorable attacks and some of Ed's unique tools. The Psycho Crusher, for example, would definitely return as a regular special move, but perhaps now Bison can even do it in the air or straight up vertically like a Shoryuken. He would also have simple controls like Ed and Falk, continuing the tradition of making the game more accessible to new players. This even gives Capcom two obvious and easy choices for future DLC content classic versions of both Ed and Bison with their unique moveset. And as a bonus to me, Bison's storyline could even offer a realistic way to bring Falk into the game since her quest to free Ed from Bison's control would be a quite compelling plot that justifies her presence. So with all that in mind, I would also like to change my roster selection based on this story theory. Like before, I'm upgrading from 18 to 25 characters and I'm keeping Zangief, Sean, Colleen and G. Judy takes Rose's place in the roster and the two classic Shadowloo Kings return, Vega and Balrog, as well as Falk and a new member of the new Shadowloo, perhaps that gorilla if we're lucky. Rounding up the roster, the new, young M. Bison. Is this theory likely? Well, no. From hating his guts, I eventually grew to really appreciate Ed, so seeing him in this new role as Bison could be quite interesting. I also wouldn't mind seeing the return of the classic Psycho Crusher under new gameplay mechanics that no longer require you to charge your moves. So there you go, here's my two theories for the plot of Street Fighter VI, one that is a little more based on clues, and another one that uses some mental gymnastics to introduce what I believe could be a fun twist. But what do you think? Do you have your own theories? Let us know in the comment section, and if you want to support the channel and help me produce more content like this in the future, please make sure to share this video with your friends. You can also send a super thanks if you're feeling especially generous. For now, this has been Edukimi Player, and I'll see you guys later.